These are practice exercises from page 99 of the textbook. We're looking at doing some stoichiometric calculations, converting from grams of one substance into grams of another substance, using coefficients from a balanced chemical reaction. So let's take a look at the first problem here. We're looking at a decomposition of potassium chlorate, using that to prepare potassium chloride and oxygen. The question asks, if I start with 4.5 grams of the potassium chlorate, how many grams of oxygen can I produce? Before we do any calculations, we want to think about what our game plan is. We want to understand which conversions we're performing and what information we're going to need to do those conversions before we get started with any numbers. So we know we're going to be starting with grams of KClO3, since that's what they give us. The only thing we know how to convert grams into is moles, so that's a good first step. So into moles of KClO3. And we know how to do this using the molar mass or molecular weight of KClO3. We'll just use the molar mass from the periodic table. So the next thing we want to do, and this is the new part, is we're going to change moles of the potassium chlorate into moles of oxygen. So how can we convert from one substance to another substance? This is when we use the coefficients from the balanced chemical reaction. So this is the new part, and this is where we relate the amount of moles of potassium chlorate used to the moles of oxygen produced. Last thing we're going to do is we're going to change our moles of oxygen into grams of oxygen, since that's what they actually ask us for, again using the molecular weight, this time, of oxygen. So we should be able to see that this is a three-step conversion, first grams to moles, then moles to moles, and then moles back to grams. You have to do it in these three separate steps. You have to go grams of one substance to moles of the same substance. Only then can you convert between two different substances. And the only time we can convert between two different substances is using mole ratio. So you have to be in moles before you can convert between two different substances. So looking at this, we know that we need to know the molecular weights of the potassium chlorate and oxygen. So we're gonna use the periodic table to calculate those. The molecular weight of potassium chlorate, calculated by finding the mass of one potassium, one chlorine, and three oxygens, again rounding everything to one decimal place. So we're going to be looking at 122.6 grams per mole, doing the same thing for oxygen. Since there are two oxygen atoms, that's going to be double the mass of a single oxygen, so we're looking at 32 grams per mole. Now that we have all the background information we need, we're actually ready to start this calculation. So we're going to start with the 4.5 grams of KClO3. We know from our plan that the first step is to get rid of the grams, convert it to moles. We know in order to do that we needed the molar mass, which tells us that every one mole weighs 122.6 grams. So this is good, it gets rid of grams, gets us in units of moles. Our next step says we need to get rid of moles of KClO3 because we actually want moles of oxygen. So I said this comes from the coefficients in the balanced chemical reaction. And you can see that they gave us the balanced chemical reaction. And this balanced chemical reaction tells us that three moles of O2 are produced for every two moles of KClO3 that are consumed. So that's our mole ratio, that's the new step. This again is the only time we can convert between two different substances. You do it using mole ratios, this allows us to get rid of moles of KClO3 and get in terms of moles of oxygen. And then our very last step, get rid of moles of oxygen because we actually want grams of oxygen. Again, this is gonna be the molar mass 32.0 grams for every mole. We can see that our units cancel, leaving us with grams of oxygen, which is what we want. So take a minute to practice putting that into your calculator. Make sure you understand how to put all those fractions in, and then round your answer to three significant figures, because that's how many significant figures are in our initial number. So you should get 1.76 grams of O2. So that is our final answer 
for this problem. If I start with 4.5 grams of KClO3, I will get 1.76 grams of O2. Again, remembering that every time you do these problems, you want to come up with your game plan first. Don't plug in numbers until the very end and you understand exactly what you're doing with your calculations. Okay, let's take a look at the second problem. So in this case, we are starting with propane, C3H8. Again, they're telling us that we are starting with grams of one substance, in this case propane, and they want mass of oxygen, and mass is measured in grams. So we're doing something very similar, starting with grams of one substance and ending with grams of another substance, but in this case they're not giving us a balanced chemical reaction. Without that chemical reaction, we can't determine mole ratios, so we have to have a balanced chemical equation. So again, let's think of our game plan first and figure out what information we need from there. We're going to start with grams of propane. We're going to convert grams of propane into moles of propane, moles of propane into moles of oxygen, and moles of oxygen into grams of oxygen. Information that we need, we need the molecular weight of propane in order to convert between grams and moles. We also need to know the mole ratio between propane and oxygen, so we need coefficients from a balanced reaction. So we're going to need to write that in a minute here. And then the last step from moles of oxygen to grams of oxygen, again, a molecular weight, this time for O2. So let's take care of the information that we're still missing. We said that we are still missing a balanced chemical reaction, so we're going to go ahead and write that in. We know we are starting with propane. Since this is a combustion reaction, we know that we are going to react it with oxygen, and for our combustion reactions we will always make carbon dioxide and water. And so we talked about when we balance combustion reactions, we want to start with carbon and hydrogen, since all the carbon in the original hydrocarbon turns into carbon dioxide, all the hydrogen turns into water. It's very easy to balance those since they only appear one place in the reactants, one place in the products. So looking at carbon, we see that we've got three carbon atoms on the reactant side, which means we want to have three on the product side. For hydrogen, we see that there are eight on the reactant side. Since they come in groups of two on the product side, we only need four groups of two. So those are our coefficients on the products. Next thing we want to do is check out what's going on with the oxygen. So three groups of two oxygens here means six oxygen atoms from the carbon dioxide, another four from the water. So we've got ten oxygen atoms on the product side, means we need ten on the reactant side. Since they come in groups of two, we only need five groups of two. So now we've got our balanced reaction. That'll give us the coefficients that we need. We can go ahead and determine our molecular weights. So the molecular weight of propane, again that's the mass of three carbons and eight hydrogens, rounded to one decimal place. It's going to give us 44.0 grams per mole. We've already done oxygen, and since so it's O2, that's 32 grams per mole. Remember that oxygen is diatomic, so whenever we talk about combustion with oxygen, we're always talking about O2. Okay, now we should have all of the pieces of information we need. We're ready to actually set up and solve this problem. So we're going to start with the one gram of propane. We know our first step is to change grams of propane into moles of propane. We know from our calculation that every one mole weighs 44 grams. Then we want to get rid of moles of propane because we actually want moles of oxygen. So using the balanced reaction, we can see that five moles of oxygen are consumed for every one mole of propane that's consumed. So notice that the number one is not written into the balanced chemical reaction, but we do write it when we do the stoichiometry because we need to see that five to one mole ratio. Another thing that's important is that it doesn't matter where in the chemical equation the two substances are. So in this case, we're comparing two reactants to each other. In the previous calculation, 
we were comparing a reactant and a product. So it doesn't matter if the two substances are on opposite sides of the equation or if those two substances are on the same side of the equation. All that matters is that they're both part of the chemical reaction so we can determine a mole relationship between them. Okay, so let's finish this up. Getting rid of our moles of oxygen, converting it into grams, since that's what the final answer should be in. And we know that there are 32 grams for every mole of O2. So watching our units cancel, grams of propane, moles of propane, moles of oxygen, leaving us with the units we want, which is grams of oxygen. Again, practice putting this into your calculator. Make sure you can do all of this math. Final answer, we'll have three significant figures. So with rounding, you should get 3.64 grams of oxygen. Again, every time you do one of these problems, you wanna make sure you're thinking through how to set it up. So please plan before you just start doing the mathematical part. Once you have the plan, the math is much easier because you understand exactly what's gonna cancel out where all the pieces of the puzzle fit.